Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Taxpayer Experience Office formally established to improve service across the IRS. But first, an attempt at a joke, I apologize in advance. Finally fed up with the Fed and the IRS auditor, I decided it was time to draw a line in the sand. However, there was no sand available at the time and going to the beach seemed like a long drive, so I just gave them all my money. But if they start charging me today for future labor, I swear I'm gonna find some sand and I'm gonna draw a line in it. That'll show them. Maybe you should just turn your line in the sand into a nice relaxing zen sand garden. No! The line in the sand is not supposed to be relaxing. It's a super serious sand line. I may even color it red with some kind of food coloring or something like that, just to emphasize the point. Well, stress is serious too, making Zen Sand Garden sand lines super serious. Yep, but you're missing the point. Well, I think you're missing the point. That's it, not another word. I'm putting my foot down. That's great. A nice walk is also really relaxing. My foot going down is not supposed to be relaxing. My foot going down is super serious. You're doing this on purpose. IR 2022-50, March 4th, 2022, Washington. As part of a longer term effort to improve taxpayer experience, the IRS has officially established the first ever taxpayer experience office and will soon begin taking additional steps to expand the effort. So the IRS is growing. That's good news, I guess. Quote, as the IRS continues taking immediate steps this filing season, including adding more employees to address the significant challenges facing a, a resource-constrained IRS, it's critical that we worked going forward to equip the IRS to be a 21st century resource for Americans, end quote, said IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick. Quote, the formal establishment of this office will help unify and expand efforts across the IRS to improve service to taxpayers, end quote. The Taxpayer Experience Office will focus on all aspects of taxpayer transactions with the IRS across the service, compliance, and other program areas working in conjunction with all IRS business units and coordinated closely with the Taxpayer Advocate Service. The office is part of the effort uh, envisioned in the Taxpayer First Act report to Congress, there's a link to that here, last year, this included input and feedback from taxpayers, tax professionals, and tax community that helped develop the taxpayer experience strategy. There's a link to that strategy here. The report to Congress identified over a hundred different programs and tools that would help taxpayers include a 360 degree view of taxpayer accounts, expanded e-file and payment options, digital signatures, secure two-way messaging and online accounts for businesses and tax professionals. So we went over a summary of some of the key components when that report came out, I believe, and there were a lot of things that looked like they could improve on, which would be good improvements. So hopefully they're doing good improvements and not, you know, trying to do like nefarious evil things like get all of facial recognitions and then put cameras all over the whole country so they could, I don't know, do some crazy controlling thing or something any case, to help drive the IRS strategic direction from improving the taxpayer experience, the Taxpayer Experience Office has identified key activities the IRS is focusing on over the next five years, including those commitments outlined in the President's uh, executive order on transforming federal customer experience and service delivery to rebuild trust in the government. Good luck with that. Trust is building is necessary. Trust building is a good idea. Let's see what they do here. Quote, the IRS is committed to customer experiences that meet taxpayers where they are in the moments that matter most in people's lives and in a way that delivers the service that the public expects and deserves, end quote, said Chief Taxpayer Experience Officer Ken Corbin, who also serves as the Commissioner of the Wage and Investment Division, which oversees the current filing season and other activities. The Taxpayer Experience Office will identify changing taxpayer expectations and industry trends, focus on customer service best practices, and promote a consistent voice and experience across all taxpayer segments by, development, by developing agency-wide taxpayer experience guidelines and expectations. The office will be adding staff in the coming months to help support the effort. Quote, 
whether working the w- whether checking the status of tax returns, meeting with a revenue agent for an audit, or receiving a tax credit to their bank account, improving service delivery and customer experience are fundamental priorities for us. In quote, Corbin said, quote, "We're committed to de- designing and delivering services that better connect with our diverse taxpayer base." End quote. Some of the areas of improvement in the near term include expanding customer callback. <laughs> yeah, that, that shouldn't it shouldn't take too much effort to improve that one because it's not it's really bad right now. So hopefully they get that one done. Expand payment options, secure two-way messaging, and more services for multilingual customers. These activities build on recent improvements such as digital tools to support economic impact payments and the advanced child tax credit online uh, online chat and online tax professional account. So there's some links to some of that information here. If you want to look into it further, there'll be a link to this in the description.